20,000 people die of cancer every day. In the 1900s, one person out of 20 would get cancer. In the 1970s, one person out of 10. Today, one person out of three gets cancer in the course of their life. In the United States, one in every four people die from cancer. If you want to get a lot of people very angry at you, and you're in the health profession, it's fairly simple. Begin to cure incurable diseases. It would ruin the economy. Billions of dollars. Cancer is one of the richest multi-billion dollar industries in the world. And every cancer patient is a commodity. The huge pharmaceutical companies have everybody in their pocket, from the president on down to the senator's representative. Everybody gets paid. There are laws against healing cancer. The doctor is not allowed to try anything else. He must use only those treatments that have already proven to be failures. Imagine what we could do if this could be accepted. But there are laws against it. You're not allowed to heal. There's too much money to be made on drugs. The FDA passed a law. They wrote their own law. And it says only a drug can be used to treat, prevent, or cure a disease. Which means, if I say an orange cures scurvy, I go to prison. That's illegal in America. If there is a medicinal claim, which means that the product is used to assist, support, um, correct a particular disease or disorder, you immediately come under medicinal law. So hold on a second. <laughs> that means that even if you had um, a proven natural remedy, yes. a natural cure, if you You're like, not okay. allowed to sell it or promote it. You Having a product and making a cancer claim is one of the best ways of finding yourself behind bars. Take a close look at this guy. He's in a maximum security prison in Westchester with some of the most dangerous criminals in the state. His bail's been set at almost a million dollars, but he's not a murderer. He's not a rapist or a drug dealer. Believe it or not, the reason this guy's behind bars is because of these. Apricot seeds. Yup, apricot seeds. And it's what he says these seeds can do that has landed him in jail. All I want to do is help. I want to heal. I want to bring out the truth. His name is Jason Vale. It's in the food. It's in the seed. Let me take back the word cure. I don't want to be in trouble for saying the word cure, which you can't say. But the reality is Jason is in big trouble as he sits in jail awaiting sentencing on contempt charges. This is a cesspool, and the American people are left helpless. We started out on the wrong foot, we stayed on the wrong foot for 100 years, and we are paying the price. Heavy trading today in the biopharma sector. Blockbuster cancer drug Herbitux racked up nearly $425 million in sales. You have this entire industry that is not going to just pack up and go away. This is the business. But there's some good news. Canadian research team has come up with DCA. They believe it's a cheap and simple drug that kills almost all cancers. You heard that right. The real story is you can't have it. Not because it's unsafe, but because your blood's going to shoot out of your eyes, because it doesn't make any money. You and I know there's big money to be made when pharmaceutical companies develop new life-saving drugs. But the gravy train doesn't last for long. After investing millions and millions of dollars into research and to the development of a new drug, companies only have a few years to make their money back, plus a profit, before their patent expires, and competing companies can make a generic form of the same drug. 
So, back to this Canadian team and DCA. They're working out of the University of Alberta in Edmonton, Canada, and scientists have tested DCA on human cells cultured outside the body. They found that it killed lung, breast, and brain cancer cells, but not healthy cells. Got it? That's revolutionary. This is bordering on a cancer miracle. Tumors in lab rats that were deliberately infected with human cancer also shrank drastically when they were given DCA. So, where's the problem? Well, since DCA has no patent, that means it can be made generically from day one. No exclusivity equals no value. You know, I, I heard that today and I thought, you know, once in a while, maybe capitalism needs to be reminded of the value of human life. There are a lot of people, I've heard many people say, well, anger, not helpful. Actually, anger is helpful depending on what you do with it. And I think if people actually knew what was happening, they would be really pissed off. They should be. Okay. Alternative medicine is, I mean, there's only medicine. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Well, that's not how this country works. Actually, alternative medicine often is illegal in this country. You can go to jail for practicing. It. Well, like such as what? Such as uh, suggest even suggesting any alternative treatment for cancer can wind. You know, you don't understand how much the pharmaceutical companies have their tentacles wrapped around the government in this country. Uh, yes, you can go to jail for practicing for, alternative for, for, medicine. For selling people. Think about it. You know, you've got thousands of doctors in oncology and in oncology residency programs. You've got the pharmaceutical industry pumping out chemotherapeutic agents every month. There are all kinds of machines that deliver radiation. You've got all this stuff in the war on cancer and it's trillions of dollars. I find it very interesting that we have all these walks for the cure of cancer. you got all the risk factors. you got all the donations. We're going to find a cure this decade. All this money keeps pouring in, and it all goes to the same guys. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. See how camels agree with your throat. It is very important for the orthodox people to keep uh, patients from coming to uh, alternative treatments because they work. People have been so brainwashed for so long. The reason that the food manufacturers are telling the public that it's safe is because they're making a huge profit off of it. You have Monsanto, DuPont, Bayer, Syngenta, and Dow. Those are the big five companies behind genetically engineered foods, and they all share one thing in common. They're not agricultural companies, they're chemical companies. Cancer is a big business, one of the biggest businesses. What we want to do is we want to match the disease with the cure. The doctors from that point forward in history would be taught pharmaceutical drugs. The monthly supply of sunitinib, a chemotherapy drug produced by Pfizer, cost almost $7,000. The gifts escalate to free lunches dinners. Champagne, brunches, happy hours. In 2004, their combined global sales were over half a trillion dollars. The drug industry is the most successful global industry in the world. What they don't want you to do is get better, because if you get better, their market's gone. A better thing to talk about, however, is the relationship between profits and cancer in the United States. Um, there was a study that was published, I believe it was in 1994, it was a 12-year program, 12-year study. They looked at adults who had developed cancer as an adult, not childhood cancer, but adult cancer, right? And this is the main types of cancer that we get here in the United States. They did a meta-analysis of these people all around the world who developed cancer as adults for 12 years and were treated with chemo. And they looked at the results, and they published the results in the Journal of Clinical Oncology. And the results? 97% of the time chemotherapy does not work. 97% of the time it doesn't work. So why is it still used? It's one reason and one reason only.
money. If you go to a medical doctor, an MD, with a sinus infection and that doctor prescribes an antibiotic, he gets no financial kickback. Now, if he prescribes 5,000, you know, of that antibiotic in one month, the drug company that makes it might send him to Cancun for a conference, right? Mm -hmm. But he gets no direct remuneration. It's not with, with chemotherapeutic drugs, it's different. Chemotherapeutic drugs are the only classification of drugs that the prescribing doctor gets a direct cut of. So if your doctor prescribes chemotherapy for you, here's how it goes, more or less. The doctor buys it from the pharmaceutical company for $5,000, sells it to the patient for $12,000, insurance pays $9,000, and the doctor pockets the $4,000 difference. And there ought to be a law. The only reason chemotherapy is used is because doctors make money from it, period. It doesn't work 97% of the time. If Ford Motor Company made an automobile that exploded 97% of the time, would they still be in business? No. This is a, the tip of the iceberg of the control that the pharmaceutical industry has on us. We, most people have no idea. When women get together and do a 5K run for breast cancer, all of that money, do you think any of that money goes to nutritional research? Do you think mm -hmm. any of that money goes to homeopathic research or acupuncture or traditional Chinese medicine or naturopathic research? No. All of it goes to drugs and surgery, which do not work. Now, why aren't those women running for selenium? If every girl in this country took 200 micrograms of selenium in one generation, we'd eliminate breast cancer by 82%. That's a big number. Why aren't we doing that? Because medicine in the United States is a for-profit industry.